So, hello Good everyone. Uh, my name many people is Barry Brown, now, um, and I work well over 50. And together with my colleagues, thank you very much, Mary and, and, and Richie, Richie and where I've done at the Neary Rathdown County Council, uh, facilitate this evening's information webinar on the draft Dundrum Local Area Plan 2023. Louise, might go on to the next uh, slide, please. So this evening's webinar format, um, there are going to be two presentations. Uh, the first uh, by Lu Louise McGarren. Um, she's senior planner uh, with the Red Down County Council. Um, and this will be followed by a recorded presentation by senior executive planner in the traffic section, uh, John Keating. The webinar format will involve uh, people being able to raise comments or queries through the chat function. Um, uh, you will note that, uh, that these comments will go directly to the panel uh, during the presentation. Um, so at any stage in the presentation, you can submit a comment uh, through the chat function, uh, which you will see uh, there um, just at the, the bottom of your screen. Um, uh, and uh, that will feed through to the panel directly. Um, what the team, our team will be doing um, is after the, 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 present, the two presentations, we will be putting as many as those questions and comments to the panel uh, as possible. Um, we do note that there's, uh, uh, there were over 130 people uh, uh, registered for the, the webinar, which we're delighted with. Um, um, so there might be quite a hard, high volume of comments and queries coming in. So we hopefully uh, will get as many of those to the panel in the half an hour following the presentations uh, as possible. Um, just to note uh, that also um, that uh, these comments and queries will be captured. Um, um, and if we don't get them uh, to post them to the panel, uh, and during this evening's webinar, uh, uh, Doniri Ratdown will be collating these and uh, we're producing a, an FAQ on the DLR web, website uh, to respond to those comments and queries raised in this evening's webinar. Um, the reason why we're doing it uh, this way, uh, where people will be putting in comments and chat uh, without uh, seeing everyone else's, is that it allows uh, people to pose queries and make comments while remaining anonymous, uh, which uh, some people prefer. And just to note, there will be further opportunities to engage in more public events uh, on the, uh, the draft LAP and to chat face to face with DLR officials. And Louise will tell you a bit more about that uh, in, in her presentation. I would like to note that uh, any queries and comments will not be taken as formal submissions. Uh, you do have to go through the LAP uh, 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 process, submission process, uh, which will be on uh, the, the, the Dunleary Citizen Space website. Um, so, and you'll find ways of doing that. Again, Louise, we'll, we'll discuss that. We will be recording this webinar to post on the, the website for others to review, review afterwards. So, Without further ado, I'm just going to hand over to Louise McGarren, uh, Senior Planner in Dunleary Rattar County Council. Thank you very much, Louise. Thanks very much, Dara. Can, can you hear me? We can indeed. Okay, look, good evening to all and thanks for the intro from Dara. And look, great to see that we, we have high numbers here this evening at, at the webinar. So I'm going to bring you through a presentation on the, the draft plan and try and simplify what I know is, is quite a lengthy document and, and series of, of appendices. Um, so look, very simply, a, a draft local area plan, it, it looks at existing and future Dundrum and aims to set out a framework to guide future development should applications come forward on various sites. And it's also about ensuring we're planning for, for schools, open spaces, childcare, community facilities, shops and employment to serve the needs of, of you, the community. I suppose the important thing to note about local area plans is that they are the higher level blueprint for development. And it, it doesn't mean that all the development happens immediately. And um, while we'll provide some of the things as the council, we are reliant on the market and planning applications coming forward. 
Um, we're very excited about this local area plan because it's the first one where we've done what is called an area-based transport assessment or an APTA, and that's what my colleague John is, is going to talk about in a pre-recorded presentation, and another colleague will be able to answer questions on it. And that's looking at the future population that will come because of the local area plan and because of development of sites and trying to manage that transport demand in a sustainable manner by, by walking, cycling and public transport. So that's been a new process for us. So look, moving on, uh, this slide is, is showing the boundary of the local area plan. It's quite a tight area, so it's stretching in the north. If you can see the, the pointer from Windy Arbor, it takes in the former Central Mental Hospital lands there, uh, the Rosemount open space, um, and then it moves down the Dundrum Road and takes in what is the, the major town centre lands. This is just showing the area um, in an aerial photo, which might make it a little bit easier. And then just jumping back to this one, it also takes in Airfield Urban Farm. You'll note we have blue areas and pink areas. So the blue were the areas we had shown in the County Development Plan as an indicative boundary for the local area plan. But on foot of the public, the pre-draft public consultation we did, the community in submissions, perhaps yourselves asked us to include this pink area at Windy Arbor and taking in the Dundrum Business Park and also an area to the east there. So the Fernbank Apartments, Gelskull Fionishka and the temporary uh, secondary school on the old Notre Dame site and also Finsbury Park. So we made those amendments when, when looking at the, uh, the draft plan. So again, that aerial photo might make it just a little bit easier to pull, pull things out. You can see that that field structure in, the, in, in airfield. You can see the major town centre lands. You can see the Lewis line there. So we've a, a vision set out in the local area plan. The first part of it is delivering on the 10 minute neighbourhood concept and providing a network of connected neighbourhoods. So a lot of people would say, what is the 10 minute neighbourhood? I'll just jump ahead to, to another slide. It's that idea of being able to access all that you need for day to day living within 10 minutes of your home by walking, cycling or by accessing public transport uh, within 10 minutes of your home. So getting kids to school, work, where you have your amenities and where you shop. And um, so it's a concept that comes from our, our county development plan. The second part of our vision is ensuring that new development is mindful of the existing scale and character and heritage of Dundrum, which is, is very attractive. We've protected structures, architectural conservation areas, Pembroke cottages, etc. The third piece is providing a choice of new homes with a mix of dwelling types, sizes and tenures where we can within planning. Um, so I'll talk a little bit later about some of the housing analysis we did in, in the plan lands and sort of future housing demand. The fourth piece of the vision is managing that future transport demand. So that's the piece John will, will talk about. The fifth piece is ensuring the provision of new and expanded community culture and civic communities. So we did a study, some of you would be aware of it a few years back, on the community culture and civic needs in a wider area and that identified needs in Dundrum. And then the final piece is the provision of public open space. We know very much, particularly post-COVID, that it's so important to people's um, physical and mental health. And um, so we want to try and provide open space, but we know that can be a challenge within uh, a built up area. So within the plan lands, we've identified some character areas. So within the town centre running north to south, we have the town edge, which is the area to the north of Taney Cross, where the Joe Daly Cycles is. We have what we're calling the community core, which is around the existing Carnegie Library and then over to the Taney Cross site, which I'll talk about in a little while. We then have what we're calling the village, which is the old shopping centre site and then are the lovely buildings along the main street, some of them protected structures, some forming into the ACA and right down to Dundrum Cross. And then we have the retail core centred around the Dundrum Town Centre shopping centre. On the right hand side of the screen, I'm just showing the, the land use zoning map, which that blue area is zoned major town centre where you have a whole variety of uses permissible. 
The other character area then is back up the north of the plan lands and we have the central mental hospital site, the domain, the hospital buildings, and then the Windy Arbor and Dundrum Business Park. So the two areas in the north and the south are connected by the Dundrum Road and we have identified opportunity sites, which, which may come forward, but we're reliant on the private sector coming forward with sites uh, for redevelopment. We've looked at the population within the plan lands. So the existing population in 2016 was about five and a half thousand. Then we looked, because we didn't have the, the census results at the very detailed level for 2022, we looked at what has been delivered since 2016. So there's about an additional 450 homes, which is about a thousand people. If you look at an average of 2.5 people per household. Uh, we then calculated an estimate of future population based on build out of what's in the pipeline at the moment. So you could have 5,000 people. So you could have a total of 11 and a half thousand within the plan lands. But I think really important to point out that that build out would be over a much longer time frame than the five to 10 years of a local area plan. In our own experience, it can take up to 20 years, but we wanted to be planning for that, particularly when we're talking to people like Department of Education to see what, what are the, the schools we need, etc. So in terms of the local area plan, I wanted to go through the actual content to hopefully aid people if they are reading through it, because it is quite a lengthy document. Um, so we have a, an intro chapter. Chapter two is urban frameworks and site development frameworks. And that's probably quite a meaty chapter for people to, to look at. There's quite a lot of detail. We've people and homes. We've transport and movement, which is all those recommendations from the, the ABDA. We have a piece on climate change. We've then a chapter in multifunctional towns and neighborhood centers. That's really recognizing that our towns play a bigger role than just retail. They have a, a civic and educational, they've, they've all these different roles they play. We have a small chapter in employment, then heritage and conservation, and then all important, the, the implementation and monitoring. So on chapter two, this chapter on the urban framework and key development sites. Um, so we have four key development sites. We have the old Dundrum shopping center, and adjacent sites. We have Taney Cross adjoining Voldemort Terrace, that's the community core. We've what we're calling the Don Marmion site. And then up to the north, we have the former Central Mental Hospital site. So for each of those sites, we have objectives under movement, placemaking, build form, and environment. So firstly, the old shopping centre site. So one of the key objectives we have in the local area plan is about provision of a local park on the main street of circa 2000 square metres, which would have a visual link by, by way of a green setback going down to the Taney Cross site in Voldemort Terrace. So I suppose in terms of size, 2000 square metres, if any of you are familiar with Dunleary, what we're doing at Myrtle Square, this park be a little bit bigger than, than that. Another key objective is getting a link over to Sweet Mount Park. And uh, this is something that came out of the ABDA that we really need to improve connections into this area so as to allow people to, to access the town centre by walking or cycling. So we want that link to be what's called universally accessible so all can use it. So we've it could potentially be at what we call a grade, which is at the bypass level. But if that can't achieve universal accessibility because of, of gradients, it might be by way of a, a, a bridge over. So both options are in there. This figure here is showing potential uses and heights and kind of a block layout um, on this site. So there's a variety of uses around the open spaces. We have community, tourism and leisure, kind of active uses with retail and restaurant along the main street supermarket um, and then residential um, we've identified like locations which could potentially take increased height so while we're saying along the main street height should generally be four story with a fifth floor setback we have identified a location here on the new open space where you could potentially have a building of height and we've identified these locations along the bypass where you could have up to 11 stories um, but important to note that that isn't a target, um, which sometimes I think it can be interpreted as. 
um, and anything would have to be assessed in terms of its, its impact, in terms of overshadowing, overlooking, et cetera. So moving on to the Tenny Cross site. So this is this site uh, to the north of Voldemort Terrace and it includes the existing roadway uh, that the bus is currently used. So it's, it's a great opportunity site. The, I, I previously mentioned the Dundrum Community Cultural and Civic Action Plan that recommended that we have a new hub for community cultural and civic hub be constructed within Dundrum Town Centre. So this site um, has emerged as a potential option that we're exploring at the moment. Um, and it also could link over to the Carnegie Library, which could also retain community uses. So that idea of a community hub. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity to have a new gateway into the town of Dundrum um, and really contribute positively to the overall regeneration of the area. Um, and also it's really great that it would have this really good link with the public transport with the Lewis stop. And um, so it's, it's connecting the two together and would obviously benefit the local community. Then moving on to what we call the, the Don Marmion site. Now it it's includes the existing Don Marmion building, the existing surface car park and a couple of smaller sites. So we have identified it as an opportunity site where you could have redevelopment with active street frontage along Sandyford Road and a building to the rear, but then also retain, we've, we've very nice and um, safe route to school into the Holy Cross School here. So we've shown open space as well. And then finally, in terms of the, the former central mental hospital site, the council were broadly in favour of the layout at eight in the recently granted application, um, which we note conditioned that, that this access here, the existing access be closed off and used just for a pedestrian cycle link come, um, pushing through into, into the Rosemount open space. Um, we did look at heights, though, and we considered there could be potential for some additional height again at these locations identified by the red squares. Um, there are lo these locations where we consider it wouldn't negatively impact on the surrounding residential area or on the uh, existing protected structures. So moving on to chapter three, which is people and homes. So the people piece is really those elements that are central to 10 minute neighborhood concept. So that's your, your child care. Um, and when we looked, we, we've quite a high population in the 25 to 39 age bracket within the plan land. So they're childbearing ages. So, you know, people are going to need child care and um, community facilities, play facilities, and then schools. So we have objectives for a community and leisure facility on the former Central Mental Hospital site, a school on the old Notre Dame campus where the, the temporary school is at the moment, um, a playground in Finsbury Park, and then childcare facilities on the, on the main sites. In terms of homes, I spoke earlier, we, we did a good bit of analysis. My colleagues, Sarah Horan and Shane McGlynn did a good bit of analysis on housing and looked at existing and future housing using the data we had. So, you know, at the moment, there's there's quite a high percentage of, of houses, your traditional semi-D, the, the split is 75% to 25% house apartments in the 2016 census. When we looked at what was built out since then, 85% of completions were apartments. So that has changed that split to 65% houses, 35% apartments. But if everything that's in the pipeline were built out, it will really reorient that mix to 38% houses, 62% apartments. Now, I think you need to bear in mind that that if you go beyond the planned lands, there's probably an, a high number. There is a high number of, of houses, traditional type houses and semi-Ds. But this change, you know, makes it really important that we're giving, having those options for downsizing and right sizing, that we're, we're providing three bed apartments, et cetera, and providing the amenities. In this chapter, we also have objectives on height and density. Uh, so just to note that as well. I've glossed over chapter four because my colleague John is going to present on that and on the APTA recommendations. So we'll move on to, to the climate action piece. Um, it's a really important part of our county plan and of what we do in the council. Um, so climate change, mitigation and adaptation, the whole compact growth that all relates to um, the climate action piece. 
So in terms of biodiversity and the context, we have the Slang River, we have Green Strips, the Lewis Line, St. Nahi Cemetery, Hedgerows and Open Spaces. And um, you can see the photo there of, of the Slang there down in Glaston Court and St. Nahi's. So we have objectives in there on the Wildlife Corridor, opening up culverts on the Slang and maintaining hedgerows and tree lines. We also have objectives on managing surface water in a sustainable way. And we've parks objectives to upgrade Sweet Mount Park, new public open space in the Central Mental Hospital lands, that new park in the old shopping centre site. And then there's an area to the rear of Carnegie Library, so you can see it there to the left, that photo, it's an old HSC building, but there is significant flooding there. So there's an opportunity for a wetland park area that could tie in really well with the, the new community hub. This slide, we've that chapter on the multifunctional towns and neighbourhood centres. So recognising the role of Dundrum, it's civic, educational, health, leisure. We have a little bit about getting a balance of, of retail uses and also residential uses into the major town centre. And then in the employment chapter, we've quite a bit about Dundrum Business Park um, and we have employment diversification and a bit on tourism, it came up in the pre-draft consultation. There was uh, support for a hotel in the major town centre and then also the role of, of airfield. And then looking at heritage and conservation, we're acknowledging that really rich piece of heritage that really contributes to the identity and the, the kind of sense of place in Dundrum. So we've policies and objectives on the protected structures, the ACAs and heritage. And we recognise the challenges, you know, finding a use for the central mental hospital lands. This is a, a lovely engraving of the building and um, it's showing the front to the rear. The windows are very, very small, which does create challenges. And then we've the all important piece in implementation and monitoring. Um, so I suppose we have various timelines for projects, but we are dependent on others. Some development is what we call developer led. So we have to wait for others to come forward um, and then others were reliant on, say, the Department of Education for schools, for the community and civic facility. We're very much at a starting point. We need to find funding. And um, so we have to work on all of that. And um, so I, I think it again comes back to that point. This is the higher level blueprint, but we have to work on then how we deliver on it. So look, my, my final slide is talking a little bit about the, the timelines and then what Dara mentioned about um, the, the open days, etc. So I suppose, look, first, thank you for listening to all of that. And I hope it wasn't too much, too much detail. The draft plan is on display for six weeks. So it went out on the 8th of June. So you have up until the 21st of July to make a submission. We then summarize all those submissions and we produce what's called a chief executive's report, which will make recommendations to change the local area plan. The plan could be made in October 2023 by the, the 40 elected members, or if there are what are called material amendments, there will be a, a further display period and the plan could be made in, in January 2024. Um, so we would really like to encourage people to make a submission and also come along to our drop in days. So we've two of those. We've next Tuesday, the 27th, 1030 to 1230 and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. We're in the Dundrum Council offices there just off Main Street beside the Lewis stop. And then again on Thursday, the 6th of July. So we've gone for another week. Hopefully if, if people are away that week, they'll be, be around. And we've gone for an, an evening slot to hopefully get people who might, you know, be working during the day, et cetera. Um, and look, just to note that for submissions, as Dara said, you do need to use the, the citizen space on our website, or you can send one in in writing to the, the senior executive officer here in Dunleary Ratdown. Um, so that is the, the end of my slideshow there. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop sharing and hand back over to Dara. Okay, thank you very much, Louise. And, and thanks everyone for all your comments. Um, so they're coming thick and fast. So some really good queries and comments. So we'll get to those. So uh, Richard, you might uh, put on the, the recorded presentation. Um, again, uh, this is a presentation uh, by a senior executive planner in the traffic section of Dunleary Rotdown County Council, John Keating. Um, uh, John couldn't make uh, the, this, this evening's panel, uh, but he 
uh, his colleague uh, Sean McGrath in the traffic session uh, section, a senior executive engineer, will be on hand to answer answer your queries. So again, uh, queries can come in during the, the the presentation. Thank you. My name is John Keating, and I'm a transport planner with Dunleary Redown County Council. Together with the National Transport Authority, we have carried out an area-based transport assessment for Dundrum, and this work has culminated in a set of recommendations for transport and mobility improvements, which now feed into the draft local area plan. The purpose of this webinar is to set out our main recommendations for walking, cycling, and public transport improvements. We'll be starting in the north of the area with Dundrum Road and environs, and we'll then move south to Dundrum Major Town Centre and environs, before finishing with our recommendations for areas to the south of Dundrum. So starting on Dundrum Road, where I'm sure many of us will be familiar with the traffic dominated nature of the street and its poor pedestrian and cycle environments. And all of this gives rise to a poor sense of place for the local community. We also know that significant residential development is planned for the former Central Mental Hospital site. So improvements are needed both to address the existing deficits and to cater for new residents. So for Dundrum Road, we are recommending traffic calming and public realm improvements, with a particular focus on the Windy Arbor area shown here on your screen. We want to transition this area to a neighborhood with much improved walking and cycling environments. We want to reduce road width, create new crossing points, provide surface treatments and raised tables at junctions to slow down traffic and make it safer and more convenient for people to walk and cycle to access local shops and services. And central to these improvements will be the proposed new Dollar to Dundrum cycle route marked in yellow in the sketch. And this will connect the surrounding residential areas to local shops, schools and services. And just to give the broader context for the Dollar to Dundrum cycle route, as you'll know, Dundrum Road itself has a restricted carriageway width in places making the provision of on-street cycle lanes problematic. So we are proposing a parallel route connecting the Dodder Greenway in the north to Dundrum Major Town Centre in the south. We are proposing to do this by using a series of existing green areas and quiet streets, as well as the proposed cycle lane through the former Central Mental Hospital site to provide a safe cycling route along the full length of this corridor. Moving on south down to Dundrum itself and starting with Taney Cross, where we have a busy junction with a poor environment for walking and cycling and no provision for bus priority. We want to address these issues by upgrading Taney Cross to a protected junction. And that means taking out the left turn slip lanes, tightening up the junction, reducing the crossing distances and making it safer for pedestrians and cyclists. We also want to remove the buses from the Waldemar Terrace area and relocate the bus stands to the periphery, onto the main street, onto the bypass, onto Churchtown Road Upper, and also onto Taney Road adjacent to the Lewis Station. We also want to implement a bus gate connection to allow buses to travel from Main Street through the bus gate connection and up around to Churchtown Road Upper where buses can lay over or rest up before recommencing their journey through Taney Cross and picking up passengers at the new bus stops on Taney Road adjacent to the Lewis Station. We also want to upgrade to segregated cycle facilities throughout the area to provide safer environments for cyclists heading to Dundrum and passing through the area. And finally, we're also looking to extend the existing one-way traffic flow on Main Street right out to the end to its junction with the bypass. We believe that these measures will provide much improved environments for walking, cycling and public transport in the area. Moving on further south again to Dundrum Cross, where although traffic volumes have reduced somewhat since the current one-way traffic arrangement came into force, there is still a large amount of true traffic using Dundrum Cross when alternative routes are available. Indeed, our analysis has shown that between 60 and 70% of traffic passing through Dundrum Cross to and from Ballantyre Road is true traffic with no destination in Dundrum Town itself. This results in congestion and a poor town centre environment. So we want to implement improvements at Dundrum Cross and as part of our study we examined the existing 
one-way traffic layout and cycling facilities, which were put in place during the COVID pandemic. And our recommendation is that this layout, which supports a traffic calmed environment and improved conditions for walking and cycling, should be retained and transitioned to a permanent scheme. We are also in favour of measures <coughs> being considered as part of the DLR uh, connector cycle route currently being progressed by the Council's active travel section. This cycle route passed through the area along Ballantyr Road, through Dundrum Cross and also along Kilmacud Road Upper. One of the options being considered as part of this new cycle route is the provision of a bus gate just here adjacent on Ballantyr Road adjacent to Dundrum Cross. This would allow safer and more attractive facilities for walking and cycling, as well as greater priority for buses, while still allowing general traffic and vehicular access to Main Street from Broad Sandyford Road and also from Kilmacode Road Upper onto Main Street. But just to note that general traffic movements would be prohibited through the bus gate area. We believe that these measures would help to reduce the amount of true traffic passing through the town and allow much improved environments for walking, cycling and public transport. Moving on further south again to Sandyford Road and just to get your bearings, uh, this is the Dunmarmion car park and opposite there you have the Dundrum Town Centre shopping centre. So first of all, along this stretch of Sandyford Road, we are not proposing any changes to the existing traffic layout. So a two-way traffic flow will be maintained all along this stretch of Sandyford Road. We are proposing here to Dunmarmion Car Park to implement a safe school pedestrian crossing area <coughs> to make it safer for children coming to and from the Holy Cross Primary School. Along the midsection of Sandyford Road then, as you know, the carriageway width is quite restricted along here, which makes it problematic to implement segregated cycle facilities. So along here, we're pros proposing traffic calming measures to slow down traffic and make it safer for people walking and cycling. And then along this section of Sandyford Road, from the Riversdale apartment entrance out to its junction with Wickham Way and Overend Avenue, we're proposing a two-way segregated cycle facility to link in with existing and proposed cycle facilities um, along Overend Avenue and Wickham Way. And just to note, we want to extend two-way segregated cycle facilities along Overend Avenue to link in with the uh, access to Sydenham Villas and, of course, uh, make it easier and safer for children going to Taney Parish Primary School. And then on the other side of Overend Avenue, we're also looking to improve cycle facilities for those accessing uh, Balalilu Station. Next, we move on to Sydenham Road, located to the east of Dundrum. And just to get your bearings, this is Taney Road to the north, and then Kilmacud Road upper to the south. And in between Sydenham Road is the road that connects between the two. Sydenham Road is a very strong desire line for local children accessing both Taney Parish Primary School and Holy Cross Primary School. However, existing facilities for walking and cycling are quite poor, with no facilities for cycling and narrow footpaths in places. So we want to implement a one-way traffic layout southbound and use the remaining road space then to provide a two-way segregated cycle lane. We believe that these measures will really improve safety for pedestrians and cyclists, and especially for school children accessing local schools. Moving on then to Dundrum Bypass, where there are two issues that we want to address. First of all, there is the issue of severance caused by the bypass itself. And we want to address this by recommending two new crossing points, one at the northern end of the bypass and another one at the southern end of the bypass, to make it easier for people living to the west of the bypass to travel on foot or by bicycle to Dundrum. The second issue that we want to address then is the issue of safe cycling facilities. As you can see here, there is a lot of interaction between motorists accessing the town centre car parks and the cycle lanes. So we want to improve this situation by moving all cycling facilities to the western side of the bypass, away from those car park entrances. And here we want to provide a two-way segregated cycle facility to make it easier and safer for cyclists to move through the area. 
Moving on then to areas south of Dundrum and starting with Wickham Way, which is the corridor connecting Dundrum to the M50. Our analysis has shown that the existing junctions and roundabouts along this route are poor environments for walking or cycling and indeed can be barriers to active travel. So we are recommending the upgrade of the existing roundabouts and the junction here with Sandyford Road to protected signalised junctions. This will allow safer and more convenient facilities for those walking or cycling while also allowing us to better manage traffic flows and implement bus priority measures down the line should it be required. We are also looking to upgrade cycle facilities to provide two-way cycle lanes on both sides of the road for the full length of the route. And just to highlight as well that much of Wickham Way actually falls outside the area of the draft local area plan. So these recommendations um, will be considered by the Council's traffic section in the context of the need to improve facilities for walking, cycling and public transport in the wider Dundrum area. And finally then we move on to Sandyford Road and here we have two objectives. First of all, we want to upgrade the existing advisory cycle lanes to segregated cycle lanes on both sides of the road. And secondly, we also want to improve safety for pedestrians and cyclists at existing junctions. And as mentioned on the previous slide, we want to upgrade the junction here with Wickham Way over and Avenue to protect the junction. And similar to what we previously described for Taney Cross, we'll be looking to remove the left turn slip lanes, tighten up the junction and shorten the crossing distances, making it safer for those walking and cycling. We're also looking to remove the left turn slip lane at the junction with Blackthorn Drive, which again improves safety for walking and cycling. And just to highlight, as per Wickham Way, much of Sandyford Road falls outside the LAP area, and these recommendations will therefore be considered by the traffic section in the context of making improvements to active travel facilities in the wider Dundrum area. And finally then, just to say that the full report of the area-based transport assessment is available to view online alongside the draft local area plan. And for ease of reference, section six of the main report sets out in detail all the recommendations arising out of the transport assessment. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much for that presentation uh, by John. Um, so what we're going to do now is there's a large volume of comments and queries that have been coming in. Uh, hopefully we'll get to as many as possible um, in the time remaining. Um, uh, Marie, if you'd like to sort of start feeding through the, the queries uh, to the panel and we can direct them to the panel. Um, uh, just also note, maybe Marie, does, uh, with the large volume of, of comments and queries, uh, maybe we, we can get a balance between the sort of more transport related queries uh, and, and also those related to Louise's presentation. Thanks very much. Yeah, no problem, Dar. I've been collating them here um, and kind of there's a couple of questions coming in on, on different themes. So Louise and Sean, I'll just... Um, get started here with them. So um, we had a couple of queries on the bus gates and how do you propose to get buses and cars up through a small windy road? Yeah, I think that's one for me. Um, yeah. It is an arrow road, but the buses will be going in one direction only. It's not a two way bus route. It's uh, the operation is to get buses from their final stop near the Lewis station. Um, to get around to the layover or resting area on Churchtown Road. So the buses are going one way. It's not a very highly trafficked road, so I don't think there should be too much of a difficulty there. Great, thank you, Sean. And also, um, I had a query, a couple of queries coming through um, on the climate action and sustainability. Um, in particular, for climate action, um, was it considered to have local uh, electrical generation and um, solar panels and or district heating using. Yeah, I can happily come in on that, Marie. We have a little bit on the key development sites um, in chapter two about considering using district heat. And um, so we do have a piece in there. Um, and obviously there are various exemptions around, around solar. And we have, I suppose it's, it's really important that for people to know the the local area plan is is almost it in the hierarchy it has to be consistent with the county development plan so there are a lot of policies in the county development plan 
um, and why they mightn't be repeated in a local area plan because you don't want to have it hundreds of pages that the county plan is, they all still apply as well. Um, so there would be um, policy on solar in, in the county plan. Okay, that's Thanks, brilliant. Sir. Thanks, Louise. Yeah, and there was a couple of questions there. So just to confirm that this is being, um, the, the presentations were recorded, including the slides and not the Q&A section now, but that will be shared on the Dunleary County Council website because there was a couple of questions about that. So that will be made available to the public. So um, there were a couple of questions as well about the additional lands. So um, how it, the consideration happened for adding those two areas to what is in the local area plan and also um, uh, a particular query about could this be expanded again in the local area plan or is this now the boundaries that are that are um, set? Yeah, so look, the expansion piece first, um, and I think it's specifically asking about Fernbank and Gelskull Fionishka and Finsbury Park. So it came about, we would have gone out in pre-draft consultation and members of the public made submissions. So we were asked to, to consider expanding it. Um, and we looked at it and went, actually, in our opinion, it, it made sense, particularly as we were also at the same time um, consulting with the Department of Education about educational needs. And um, so it was really important to, to have those sites in there and then also bring in Finsbury Park. And there's an objective for a playground. Um, in terms of expanding it again, um, there's no, it, it would be a material amendment, so we would have to go out on display again, but people can make a, a submission. Um, but I'm I'm very conscious, you know, even bringing in Windy Arbor, I wondered, would we get submissions from people saying, well, that's not Dundrum, um, you know, and we did look at expanding and bringing in other areas. And um, so, you know, in within the Dublin suburban area, people have a very, you know, good idea of what they perceive to be Dundrum and we, we don't want to start overstepping into other areas. We also joined the Goatstown local area plan boundary where Cheek and Gel with it on the eastern side. So it, it wouldn't make sense to bring okay. in lands from that yeah. side. Thanks, Louise. That's great. Thanks. So yeah, also um there were a couple of queries there um just to get more detail on the consideration of the elderly in the local area plan, um, in particular, elderly gaining access into the, the town centre. OK, we've actually Zara has done a, a lot of work on um, elderly and and disabled in terms of we do have a background paper on it. So we have a specific policy around um, accommodation and, and ensuring that we're getting units in, in new developments that are suitable for, for the elderly and also for those who are disabled. And we also, I suppose, have, within the LAP, we're conscious of the, the age-friendly policies and they'd be very much focused if we're looking at, you know, new urban realm improvements that we're taking that into account. And that looks at things like access and providing seating. So, you know, people don't have to walk huge lengths that there's seating available. So that's always there. In, in the background when we're working on projects. That's great, thanks Louise. And um, just um, like a similar question, but provisions for like more understanding of the provisions for local um, children and childcare facilities in the local area plan. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I touched on the fact that when we did the age analysis, we're very aware that the, the age profile would indicate there is a high demand for childcare. And Zara, again, did, did work in terms of the survey piece. And, you know, there was quite a change in COVID. So some facilities that when we went out, we discovered they were no longer operating. So there's very much a need. We're very conscious of that. So we've tied in the objectives to, to get new childcare facilities um, in line with the sort of national policy and then very much on the key development points. And just that's great. So just a, a, a follow up. Sorry, Marie, there's a, just a follow up question and just in terms of uh, the elderly and e it's I think there was also a follow up questions about ease of access to the village um, and um, and you know there's possibly that some need to drive to get their shopping they can't be carrying at home walking or cycling so that's a that was a follow-up question there in relation to the elderly and access Sean maybe you want to yeah. say something about 
that. Yeah, yeah just, again, we're very conscious of that. And uh, people would have noted that when we put in the COVID measures of making Main Street one way, we retained the number of disabled spaces. I think we may even have increased the number of disabled spaces. Um, and that's something that would be always conscious of. I would also say that often people talk about the elderly and that their need to drive. Again, there's a certain cohort of the elderly who are beyond driving age, and there'd be a certain cohort also uh, who would make use of free public transport. Um, and then there's some of them will be walking and cycling. One of the ideas about uh, internationally on cycling, we talk about eight to 80. People who are aged eight to 80 should be accommodated by high quality, safe, comfortable cycle routes. So when we talk about elderly using their cars, that's a certain portion of them and they will be catered for as they particularly use in disabled bays. But the elderly also use other forms of transport. Um, and as Louise mentioned, making that, that comfortable for them in terms of the on-street facilities and for pedestrians to cross busy roads. That's a big part of the, um, the, the process of making the town uh, accessible for elderly people. That's great. Thank you, Sean. I also have just a follow up question. And um, there, there were a lot of uh, queries coming in with regards to traffic volumes currently and, and to those growing. And one in particular about Taney Cross as a main feeder from the M50 and currently having a lot of traffic volumes. Yeah, again, traffic volumes is a problem. Um, traffic volumes create severance it makes it difficult for people to get across the road so the, the level of traffic is something that we're very conscious of and again with the huge increase or big increase in the, the population likely to come from the Duntrum towns the old shopping center side and from the central mental hospital side there will be an increase in demand for travel and we just cannot sustain that by providing for new car transport or even catering for the existing that the current situation of having large volumes of traffic makes places much more unpleasant in which to live, work and play. The particular aspects of Dundrum, in particular the main street, is well uh, bypassed. We have the bypass, which does take a fair bit of traffic, and then you have uh, Wickham May and Overend, and Taney takes the traffic. So in, in many ways, Dundrum sort of has a, a route around it, a triangular route around it for taking the main traffic out of the central area and we're trying to make those routes as pleasant as possible given that they will continue to take certain volume of traffic in terms of access from the m50 yeah there's a wider network and that that has a wider implications in terms of people taking alternative routes maybe down um by um through ballantyre ballantyre road or maybe stone masons um and barton road east and, and they sort of impact we would have would spread out across the network, um, sort of like ripples across a pond, but that the main objective is to reduce dependence on the private car and reduce the congestion associated with that. So that's the main objective, and not just of this local area plan, but also the county development plan, strategy for the Dublin region, and national strategy. And indeed, it's happening continent and worldwide as well. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Um, Maria, I just I might just come in with a question myself. Those few questions coming in, just uh, some concerns ex expressed on the amount of apartments in the area um, and just related to that, you know, their suitability uh, for uh, people with children um, and whether they're appropriate uh, for people with children. Um, also, just related uh, to that is uh, um a query on well, what what you mean by a, a building of height um uh, louise so just some grouped queries about building heights and apartments thanks yeah no i i understand and i i guess people have have concerns about apartment living um, and we would have seen a lot of, you know, permission applications coming in for for solely one and two beds, which which caused us concern. So, in our new county plan, we've we've a policy around getting, you know, bigger units so they are suitable for families or people downsizing. And um, so, getting twenty percent three three beds within an area like Dundrum. 
We also have a policy in the local area plan H3 about getting communal facilities within um, or encouraging them. And that's that idea of having a, a communal room within an apartment scheme that people could use, um, you know, for a child's party or something and would, would be a big space. And um, so we're very conscious of, of trying to, to look at how, how apartment living, living can work if we are addressing climate change and, and government policy direction, which is towards compact growth. We, we do have to look at it. Um, building up height, yeah, we have that defined in the county plan. And it's really, I'll, I'll just read it out, it's defined as a building or buildings taller than the prevailing building height in the surrounding urban area. So, you know, it, it just does depend on where you are. Um, but it, if, if it is, you know, two to three stories higher than what is the prevailing height in the immediate vicinity, then it's, it's taken as a building of height and we, we assess it in accordance with the criteria. Thanks, Louise. Um, I have an, another um, group of questions there for you, Sean, with regards to there's some queries coming in around um, the consideration behind the cycle means and provisions for cycling in this new local area plan and one person in particular was asking um will it be compulsory for cyclists to use cycle lanes uh, on that one the legal situation is no uh, on the basis that if the cycle lanes are not good enough to attract cyclists onto them then they shouldn't be forced onto them in the same way as car drivers are not particularly forced to use one particular route or one particular lane um when they're, they're making a general journey we would hope that the quality of the cycle lanes will be such as to make them attractive for everybody from aged eight to 80. there were a few questions about making further streets, one-way streets, and providing two-way cycle lanes, as happened on Drum Main Street during COVID. We did consider further options um, along the Dundrum Road and further north. The traffic impacts of those were excessive, and we therefore decided not to do that. Um, I think those are the main ones. Was there anything else there, Mary? Just related, related on that, um, the, the the design of the Wickham Way junctions are, are they proposed as Dutch roundabout, uh, uh, Dutch style roundabouts, Sean? Yeah, again, Dutch style roundabouts have advantages and disadvantages. They require a little bit more space, so there is quite a bit of space on the existing roundabouts. Uh, our view is that the uh, signalised junctions, uh, protected signalised junctions, are a better option than the um, Dutch style roundabouts. There was also a question about consultation on that. That's outside the LAP lands, but if we're going to go through uh, major junction changes like that, we will certainly consult uh, on that at a later stage. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, I'm just mindful now we are coming close to the end of the webinar, but I have just um, two questions that, um, a particular ones that um, someone was asking about planning permissions granted or planning permissions that are pending decision within the local area um, will they be now impacted by this draft plan at the moment or that'll be later and um, so on on anything that's granted that was would have been granted with without the, the local area plan being there and in terms of a draft and um, there is a provision so if there's any pending applications Within the Planning Act, it does say the local authority or the board may also consider any relevant draft local area plan, which has been prepared but not yet made. But that's only for the planning applications made to the local authority. It wouldn't apply to the, the SHD applications that are in the pipeline. Um, that's my understanding of, of the legislation, but I, I am not a, a legal legal expert. Brilliant. Okay, well, that's, that's, may, that's maybe something that could be answered in the FAQ, Louise. Uh, just on, on that, I'm sorry, um, does the LAP assume uh, the passing of the Dundrum, uh, just on speaking of SHDs, of the Dundrum Village SHD? So um, does we, this... We can't, we can't assume anything. That's that's a decision for, for on board Planola. Um, so we, we just await, await that decision. Okay. And, and just on... Um... Uh, Sean, a query um, coming up about the expansion of capacity. There's some queries in about getting more Lewis and more rail um, to, to, you know, meet the demand. 
Yeah, the interior going through the Green Line Capacity Enhancement Scheme at the moment, which involves lengthening the number, the lengthening the trams and increasing the numbers, and that is expected to provide additional capacity to get us up until I think it's 2040 or 2030 something uh, in the in the regional strategy for the Greater Dublin area. Um, Bus Connects is pros progressing more slowly than is anticipated because of the lack of drivers and the difficulty getting drivers means that the enhanced bus capacity is being rolled out more slowly than was anticipated, but that will can be continuing. And the changes that we're making around Dundrum will improve the interchange between the Lewis and the buses. So those are, are continuing on. And in the very long term, there is an option for a Lewis line along the N11 to join up um, and that will take capacity or take demand from the green Lewis line and divert it onto a new Lewis line in, in along the N11 Slogan Road. But that is very long term and outside the scope of this LAP. OK, um, thanks. We're, we are getting to the end of that time. I might finish on a couple of um, uh, I suppose more technical questions in relation to submissions, uh, Louise, um, uh, of submissions to the John Drum office, or uh, do they have to have uh, written submissions, or uh, do they have to go to the Don Leary office? Um, was one of the queries. Um, maybe you can just um, remind people of the, the the ways that people can make submissions, um, and then just uh, related to that. Uh, there are transport elements outside the local area plan um, that uh, Sean and John uh, discussed in his presentation. Um, and is this the, how do you submit um, uh, comments on those uh, elements that are outside the plan? Thanks. Um, I, I can come in. So on, on making the submissions, you can make it into Leary, you can make it into Drum in writing. And there's no problem in whichever office you, do, you don't have to come over here to Dunleary and then you can do it online through Fitness and Space. So that's that's an easy way and that's probably the way most of them come in, but there's no problem. Um, and then on the, the other transport matters in the ABDA, um, if they're outside of the LAP, they're they're not they're not covered by by the local area plan. But they well, Sean can come in if they, they may go through their own different consent processes and even things within the LAP would as well. And then there would be an opportunity for people to make submissions if it's a part eight or if it's going to a board panel under the Roads Act. Am I right? Sean, before, be, I'd say to be a little bit more scale and say these sections. Yeah, sorry, Dara. Before you come in, Sean, there's a question, you know, is there a fee with submissions? There's no fee with, with submissions uh, or making observations in relation to the part eight. So just, just to confirm that query that, that just came in. Sean, so if you want to talk about the, those elements outside. The, yeah, the converting, plan. yeah, primarily it's converting the roundabouts to signals along the Wickham Way. Um, they, they're of a scale which wouldn't require a part eight or an SHD so that they will go through what's uh, likely to be non-statutory consultation under Section 38, uh, the work's happening under Section 38 of the Roads Act. So a lot of people would be familiar with that because that's what we've done on a lot of the schemes we've done around the place. And public consultation is an important part of schemes, even if public consultation is not actually required. Um, so that's called non-statutory consultation and it probably would apply on uh, in those cases. Great, Sean. Okay, listen, I think we're going to have to uh, wrap it up now, um, as we said at the outset, and as Louise also explained, um, this this webinar uh, has been recorded, um, and the, that re recording will be made available on the Dunleary web uh, website. Uh, all the information about uh, the, the public events will also be on that, and also the way uh, to make submissions. Um, so uh, maybe Louise, if you want to say a few final words, um, and then we'll 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 wrap we'll wrap that up. Thanks everyone for all the comments. There's been a huge volume. Um, thanks Marie for uh, feeding them through to the panel um, and getting through a, a large number of them. But there are still uh, quite a number that haven't been answered. As we said, we'll incorporate those into an FAQ that will again be made available on the the website. Louise, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dara. So thank you to Marie and Dara and, and to Sean. 
and, and thank you to everyone for attending. There's certainly loads of things coming in that will give us food for thought and we'd really like to see them coming in by way of formal submission um, and then we we can address them. So it's it's great and we'd really like to encourage people to come along to the drop-in days. I'll be there, Shane will be there, um, Sean or John um, and other members of the, the team. So we'll have plenty of people to, to talk through various elements. Um, so thanks again.